Today I'm going to show you how to use the math nodes minimum and maximum with the float ones and the vector ones. And also I'm going to show you how to do this animation. So let's see. There's the camera, the LIGO 270 nodes. Let's hide this panel and this one. Let's get in a profile and I'm going to use a point, a single point. Let's go to here and we have a single point here. I'm going to hide the 3D cursor because I don't want to see it. And we can ignore this. Now, I want to animate, offset the position of this point. So we are going to use set position. Now with set position, we can offset it in any axis. This one, this one, and this one. Okay. Now, imagine the situation that what I want is to offset this point in the red one, but I want to define, for example, a limit. A limit here and here. So I have a control and I want to move this in this direction and in the other direction. But I want to create a rule to say, look, if you pass this point, stop here. Or if you pass this point, stop here. So to do this, first of all, we need to animate this and we need to add something here. So first of all, I want to isolate this. So now we can control this axis with any float. And now we need to add something here to create a rule because with this, we don't have any limit. So, so let's use a simple float value. We can animate this. And now we need to add something here to define this limit and this limit. So let's start with math node, add it here and select minimum. And now how this works? Look, I'm going to select two. And I'm going to try to move this in this direction. Okay, this doesn't do anything. And let's try in the other direction. Boom! Suddenly, it stops here if I try to make this number higher than this number. So, as you can see, minimum, don't get confused that minimum is the minimum value in this axis. No. Minimum means that it's checking these two values. It's like a rule. And it's saying, okay, you are telling me that the minimum value we need to get is this one. Okay. So, you can control this how you want. However, if this value pass this number, so now the important number is this one because it's the minimum value. This is less than this one. So this is like a filter, a limit. For example, we can say to be in 0 0.5. So if I say 0 0.5, I'm saying that whenever this value is higher than this one, this one will be the most important. Because this one is the minimum value between these two. So this is how it works. Now, how we can do the same in the other direction? To do the same in the other direction, for example, I'm going to define two. And now I want the same, but here I want to stop it in negative two. Then to create this rule, we need to use the partner of this one. Let's make a copy and select maximum. And here we can do the same. Select minus two. And now that means that if I try to go below this number, let's check it, it stops. How it works? The same. It's making a comparison. It's saying the maximum value will be this one. Because this one is higher than this one. Don't get confused for the negative number. So it's checking this and it's saying, hey, you told me that this number will be the maximum. So I need to stop the point here. And now with these two nodes, we created a range here and here. And you can move this, that always will stop. So it's like creating a filter, a barrier. It doesn't matter if you add this here, it's the same, as you can check. But I think it's better to leave it like that because it's more intuitive. So try to think like this is a range. And you can make it shorter. For example, minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. So now this is the range. It doesn't matter if I increment this or I decrease, that always this will be the range. So now you know how to filter any value with these two nodes. Also, you can do it in other axes, for example, in this one. So it's the same. Let's select, for example, negative 2 and 2, and it's the same. 
or for example, in this axis. If you are confused, you can leave this here and see that this is checking. And also what you can do is to delete this and if you add this here, it's doing the same but in this diagonal. So in the three axes at the same time. Okay, now let's see the same but with the vector math minimum and maximum. Here we have one point. I'm going to select, for example, 10 points now. And now we have 10 points, but the 10 points are in the same position. So I want to offset these points in every direction. Something like that. We could use random, but I'm going to use noise. So here in offset, let's use noise texture. I'm going to select the color one. So have more directions. And now, first of all, all the points are being offset 0 0.5 in positive. So we need to add here vector math subtract minus 0 0.5. 0 0.5. So we get back the original position. You have always to apply this when you use nice texture in offset. Now, what I want is to offset these points because we didn't offset these points. So here we can see that if we select 4D and we try to animate these points, we can offset them, but they are in the same position. So what we have to do is to say, look guys, for every point that they have one number, the index, use a different value. So let's use index. And we have to connect it here in vector. So what we are doing now is saying every point that have an index, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., use a different initial position for the noise. So now if we animate this, you will see that we can see all the points. Perfect. Now let's animate this without keyframes. So let's select a scene time and use seconds. And now we have this animation. I want to slow down this velocity, so let's add math node and select divide to reduce and slow down the velocity. If you divide it by a higher number, it goes slower. Okay, now the problem is that they are really close. I want to control the offset, the direction, the distance. So I want to increment this noise. To do this, what we have to do is to add a vector math node and select a scale. Remember, scale is to increment the distance. So if we increment this, you will see that now we have more distance between them. Really important. Add this after this one. If not, look. You're incrementing first this and then subtracting. That's why it looks like this. So this really important has to be after subtract. If you want that it works perfectly. Okay, now we have all these points. If you want more points, remember, we can add more points here, as many as you want. Let's select, for example, 50. And now, what I want, we can increment here the distance. I want to define a limit, like in the first example. What I want is like to create like a box and say, please don't go further than, for example, this direction, this direction, but in any axis. So we want to create like an invisible box. So to do this, what we have to do is to add after this, use a vector math, because now we work with vectors, remember, and select minimum. So this is the same like before, but with vectors. And here we can define the minimum value for every axis. That's why we have this. So it's the same like before, but now we are working with vectors. And look, now the points, I'm going to mute this, look before and after. So now we are saying that the points cannot go higher than this position, 0, 0, 0. So here, so all the points, as you can see here, they are in the negative values because this is the minimum value. 
or we can say, okay, guys, don't worry. Go, for example, let's define one value in positive axis. So now they are in one value positive axis. However, if we increment this, you can see that we don't have a filter in the other direction, in the maximum. If you want to see it better, I'm going to add more points. So you can see this invisible cube. So let's create the other limit. Remember, what we have to do is just copy this and select maximum. And now let's decrease this. Remember, it's better to make it negative. Look, now that we have a lot of points, we can see this invisible box. So maybe it's easier to understand. With this, I define this limit. And with this one, this limit. So for example, let's select in 3 and positive 3. Or if you want, if you don't want a box, you can do it like that. But I'm going to select in 3 and positive 3. So now we have this limit box that is defining the limits of the space that these points can move. Thanks to maximum and minimum to this range. So these values is checking that these noise don't pass these values. Really important, you need to add this after this. If not, it's not going to work. Look, let's try to add it, I don't know, here. And you will see it doesn't work. So if it doesn't work, it's really important the order. I put some notes. This is the range, remember? This is the animation. And here you can customize the noise. You can increase the scale if you want. If you increase it, it will be faster. You can, for example, add detail and they are more compressed. So you can leave it in zero and it looks better. I'm going to decrease this, something like that. Let's check it. And this in zero and this in zero. And now what I want is to create like a box. So what we're going to do is to use a cube. And let's add join geometry. Let's connect it here. And I want to define it. For example, let's define this minus one and this one. Let's disconnect this one moment. And I want to convert this cube in a curve. So let's use mesh to curve. So we can see this cube. This cube is one meter in every side. So we can try to match this with this. And this is like a cube, but this cube is like two meters because it's one positive, one negative. So two meters. So if you want to match the size, then we have to select two meters. And now if we connect this here, you will see that the points are inside this cube. It's not that they are inside, they are not directing to the cube, but this cube helps us to see more or less the size of this. By the way, I'm going to decrease the number of points because it's going crazy. So I'm going to select, for example, 50. And now you can see this animation. By the way, if we try to render this, we will not see anything because first of all, we need to give a mesh to this curve. So mesh to curve. And let's select, for example, a cycle. OK, we have this. And now I'm going to call it wireframe cube. And now let's add some objects to these points with instance on points. For example, let's select UbiSphere. And now we have this animation. So thanks to minimum and maximum value, we create like an invisible box where these points cannot move out of the box. If you want to make it more realistic, because sometimes it looks like they're trying to pass the box, then you can increment a bit this cube. So let's increment, for example, 2.05. As you can see, look before, after. Looks more realistic. I'm going to add some materials, so let's add set material in the points and in the wireframe. frame. 
So here, after adding materials and some gloves, we have this really cool animation. And if you want more points, remember, go here and add more points. And also, if you don't want a cube, remember, we can change here the size of the box. For example, let's do something like that. Six meters. And now here, I should do the same. So we change the X. So this will be three because we said six meters and this minus three. So now the points, if we start again, can go in this direction. But let's increase the scale. So I hope you learned something new and if you like this video, give a like, subscribe and you can donate this project and many more on my Patreon. And see you in the next video.